I had a message on Twitter from Carly. Thank you, Carly. She says, Hi Giles, I've just found your YouTube channel. I've dived into Python having fallen in love with coding. However, I'm 30 years old with two children and have no technical background. Is it possible to gain a career? Now that's an interesting question and I think we should talk about it. But let's do it at a better location than here. What drew me to this question was the way that it had been framed. I may be wrong, but implicit in this tweet is, in spite of a newfound love of coding and a clear commitment to learn Python, which incidentally is particularly obvious if you take a look at Carly's Twitter feed, there's doubt as to whether this is something that is actually achievable, due to several factors like age, family circumstances, and technical experience. Now this is interesting to me because I receive an awful lot of questions, just like this one. Now it's getting a bit hot, so let's go somewhere a little cooler. Let's talk about age to start with. I've come to the coast where it's a little cooler. Now, before we get on to how you might feel about your age and whether or not you've left it too late, it's important to know that employers, certainly in the EU and the US, are not allowed to discriminate on the basis of age. It's really important that you know that. Incidentally, neither can they discriminate on, now hold on, I've got the list here on my phone, let me just find it, gender, race, religion or belief, disability, pregnancy and maternity, marriage and civil partnership, sexual orientation, or gender reassignment. So if you think age is an issue, just leave it off your CV. They can't force you to put it on there. But how do you feel about your age and planned career move? You probably think you've left it too late. And I think we all have a tendency to feel this way. This is Giles from the future doing the edit. I've just noticed that the sound on this bit is a little bit distorted. Uh, that was because of the wind. I've tried to clean it up as much as I can, but that's as good as it gets. It only lasts about another 30 seconds uh, and then it'll improve. Oh, and also I need to apologize. I hadn't realized how messy my hair was. I'm overdue a haircut and um, I promise one's coming, but uh, well, there's a... a, a <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there's a funny reason why I haven't got my hair cut recently. Um, I'll explain it to you at the end of the video. I think in the end it comes down to perspective. The problem is that today, right now, right this second, you're the oldest you've ever been. You've never been older than you are right at this moment watching this video. And that skews your perspective. It makes you think you're too old to do things when really you're not. And you wish you'd started three, four, five years ago. Had you done that, then it would be fine but now it's too late. But if I'd have asked you that question five years ago, you'd have probably felt the same way. And if you don't start today, in five years time, you'll think, oh, if only I'd started five years ago, that actually would have been all right. But now in this fictional time, five years in the future, it really is too late. But it's not just age, it's the what ifs. What if I fail? What if I'm not good enough? What if I just can't make this work? But I think the counter to that is, what if my talent goes undiscovered? What if I never fulfill my potential? What if I don't give this my best shot? Ask yourself, is what you're doing now the optimal set of circumstances for you? Or is it something that just feels comfortable and reassuring through familiarity? If the only reason you're doing something today was because you did it yesterday and it seemed okay, then maybe that's not enough justification. But it does mean swapping the perceived certainty of what you're doing now with the uncertainty of doing something new. And we all tend to prefer certainty over uncertainty, and uncertainty is a, a good reason not to make a change. But I'd say rather than certainty, it's familiarity. I think the unfulfilled potential of human talent is a real tragedy. So don't let your bias towards the familiar stop you from fulfilling your potential. And don't let your fear of not being good enough be a barrier either. Good news is that anyone can become expert at anything. And that's a scientific fact. 
Benjamin Bloom, who was a professor of education at the University of Chicago, studied this in 1985, and more work has been done since. And the findings are very clear. Experts are made, not born. You can become an expert in any field you want using a technique called deliberate practice. And if you're an expert, I guarantee someone will want to hire you. Now, I'll cover the research behind this in a future video, but I've put some links in the description to deliberate practice, and it's definitely worth having a look at. In the other part of Carly's tweet, she mentions having children as if that could be an impediment to getting a job. Tech is crying out for more diversity in the workplace. It needs more women. It needs more women with children. It needs more parents. That can only be a good thing. Don't let that put you off. Whatever your background, there's no reason why you won't fit in. In fact, if you don't have a typical background, you should see yourself as more valuable as you bring different experiences and a richer perspective with you. Particularly as a parent, I think you develop certain skills that non-parents might not have. And that could make you a very interesting proposition as a potential employee. Carly also mentions not having a technical background, but you know, this is something that you can acquire through doing your own projects, building projects, uh, doing work experience, or having a mentor. Have you heard of Nicholas Winton? He was an incredible man. He saved 669 children from the Nazis. And I was really lucky to meet him a couple of times. And he had a saying, and the saying was, if it's not impossible, then there must be a way to do it. And I think you can apply that to your career change. It's something that you can definitely do. You're not too old, you can become an expert, and I know you can do this. Just persevere. Oh yes, I nearly forgot to explain about the hair. Well, um, I'm currently in northern France, in a very rural area of northern France, and um, I don't speak much French. Uh, I normally spend my time between the UK and Spain, and my Spanish isn't bad, and obviously I'm a native English speaker, but my French is dreadful, and uh, I haven't yet plucked up the courage to go to the hairdresser in France, because I can't explain how I want my hair cut. Uh, so that's why it's getting longer and longer and longer. But I'm back in the UK next week, so uh, hopefully I will be shorn by then. This channel is supported by Coursera. Now, if you haven't heard of Coursera, it's an online learning platform that I think is really democratizing education. It's particularly strong for data-related courses, and I've put some links in the description below to some courses that I particularly like. So if you're interested in a paid-for online course on this subject, then go and take a look. Thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and if you really like the channel,